So our class today and a series of videos that I'm going to prepare for this class is about mitochondrial cell biology. And the idea here is to talk about mitochondrial architecture and structure and how mitochondria relate to other organelles in the cell. Not in an extensive way, but giving you an idea of the properties that are needed so that you can understand mitochondrial bioenergetics. So this is an overview focused on mitochondrial structure as it is important for mitochondrial bioenergetics. So this here is an electron microscopy of what could be a typical mitochondrion. I do have to say that the structure, the size, the organization of mitochondria vary a lot from cell to cell. So this typical figure uh, really can be rather atypical depending on what cell you're looking at. But mitochondria in general have a matrix, which is the inner part of mitochondria where water-soluble enzymes are present, such as the enzymes of the citric acid uh, cycle and the enzymes of beta oxidation, for example. Mitochondria also have an inner membrane, which is a very long membrane where we have the components of mitochondrial oxidative phosphorylation machinery, such as the electron transport chain and the ATP synthase. Mitochondria also have an outer membrane. This is the membrane that's going to be the outer limits of this organelle, and it's going to be the membrane that relates to other organelles in the cell. Between the inner and the outer membrane, there is a small space, which is the intermembrane space, that actually has very specific properties of its own. Specific proteins are expressed there, and also their transport properties between the two membranes. In certain parts of the inner and mitochondria, outer mitochondrial membranes, you will have contact sites, which are sites in which the distance between the two membranes is a lot smaller than it is in the rest of the organelle. Uh, it has been found that at contact sites there are specific proteins that are expressed, and the expression of these proteins is important to dock the two membranes together and also to promote transport uh, of different components that go into mitochondria and through both membranes. The inner mitochondrial membrane folds within the matrix and forms these structures known as crystal. And the crystal are very important because they increase the surface area of the inner membrane, which is a lot larger than the area of the outer membrane. And this is really important because that's where oxidative phosphorylation occurs. Cristae tend to have tips. The tips of Christi are important because this is typically where ATP synthase molecules are, so the tips of Christi are where we synthesize most of our ATP uh, through oxidative phosphorylation. Christi also have a junction area, which is the area in which Christi meet the inner membrane that meets the outer membrane. Junctions are important because they can have different properties under different conditions and they separate the Christi area from the intermembrane space. Now when you see a figure like that, you start to think that all mitochondria have these very thin tubules um, forming their crista, and they're always parallel, and this is the typical kind of figure you will see in a textbook. But when Carmen Manella's group started looking not only at two-dimensional electron microscopies, but reconstituting the structure of mitochondria in three dimensions, what they saw is that the structure of Christi is actually much more complex than we tend to think just looking at these typical figures in textbooks. You can see Christie that are quite small, you can see Christie that are quite large, and they don't really have a very tubular form. They're more of flat coin forms in this type of mitochondria. If you go to different cell types, Christie can be even more different. Christie have, can have very, very complex structures and can be very large. And how this relates to function, how this relates to transport of different components of oxidative phosphorylation, how this relates to the membrane potential in different parts of these Christi, is still something that we are starting to understand right now. But there's actually a lot of diversity in the structure of Christi. This was found when uh, three-dimensional structures of mitochondria were reconstituted uh, electronically, but it actually was already suspected from data from a long time ago, because it was pretty well known that isolated mitochondria could scatter light in different ways depending on their metabolic condition. So the light scattering of mitochondria incubated in low concentrations of ADP 
a situation in which they're not promoting oxidative phosphorylation that we call state four is quite different from the light scattering of mitochondria that are incubated in high ADP and therefore are doing oxidative phosphorylation when we call this state three. And this was named condensed and orthodox uh, mitochondrial configurations at the time just based on these light scattering properties. What we know today is that changes in metabolic properties will change light scattering and the structure of Christi. And the reason that light scattering changes is because of the structure of the Christi and the relationship between the inner and outer membrane. Um, typically, if you take a picture of mitochondria inside a, an intact cell or in a tissue, you will see the Christi more in this flatter configuration, which was called the orthodox configuration. Well, if you isolate mitochondria, they very typically have larger Christi, the swollen Christi, which also indicates a smaller matrix. Um, and what we believe today is that this is a property of isolated mitochondria because the matrix lost water and lost potassium. And in fact, you can return water and potassium to mitochondria in vitro, and they will recover a more orthodox configuration. So not only the metabolic state is going to determine the structure of Christi, but also the ionic transport chain, the, the ionic transport state, and the, the function of mitochondria in vitro versus in vivo. All of this is important because the different properties of the Christi can change oxidative phosphorylation, and they can also change the relationship between the inner and the outer membrane. If you have a more condensed versus a more swelled matrix, this is going to change the properties of transport between the inner and outer membranes. So all of this is something that you have to take into account when you're doing experiments with either isolated mitochondria or mitochondria within cells. This is going to change the structure of your mitochondria. Finally, it's not only a property of changes in metabolic conditions or changes in transport or isolation, promoted changes, mitochondria actually have changes in the structure of Christi all the time within a normal cell under physiological conditions. So very recent data have allowed us through super resolution microscopy to look at the structure of mitochondrial Christi. And within a few seconds, the structure changes. So Christi are dynamic, they're changing size and shape over time. And this happens in addition to changes in size and shape of mitochondria, which I'm going to talk about in the next video. But before we talk about these changes in size and shape of the whole mitochondria and changes in mitochondrial dynamics, I want to talk a little bit more in the next video about what the structure and properties of the inner and outer mitochondrial membranes are. So I'll see you there.